true stories that make us say, wow, God, wow, God, wow, God. It happened so fast. I don't even know how it happened. All of a sudden he was being pulled and he was going down the hill, caught up in this web of the rope hanging from the chairlift. All of those details are very vivid to me and I don't know why, but I have almost a snapshot in my head and I can still see his face. In my mind, I thought my dad had come and saved me, but I was still by myself and there was nobody there. You might have a story inside of you that you have never considered through the lens of angels. My name is Lisa Williams, and I'm here with my dear friend, Ann Sorensen, and today we're going to listen to Wild God stories that are about angels. Lisa, what you just said is exactly something that I've been thinking about in listening to these stories. How many angels have I encountered that I didn't recognize as angels, but I thought of them as angels? Like, wow, that person was an angel, but not a literal angel, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, because I've been doing the same thing, listening to these stories, preparing for today, preparing for you to hear these stories with me and Anne. I've thought in Winter Park, Colorado on a trail, I think that was an angel. In an airport in Dallas, Texas, I think that was an angel. In an infertility clinic when I was so discouraged and this woman starts talking to me in the lobby later, I was like, she said exactly what I was praying about 10 minutes earlier. Wait, (laughs) was that an angel? And so, yeah, Ann and I are hoping that as you listen to today's show, perhaps you start revisiting some of your own memories through the lens of God's love for you and for these ministering spirits that the Bible talks about in Hebrews chapter 13, it says, keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so, some of you have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. The stories that you're going to hear today point to the mystery of God. I'm in awe of God and how he helps us in times of need. And one way he does that is through sending us angels. And so let's just open up our hearts and minds to the idea there are angels and listen to some wild God stories. Thank you so much to Meredith Foster and the Unfolding Podcast, where these stories were originally heard. And today we have picked a few of these for you to hear as you consider your own wild God story. The first story you're going to hear is from Christy Yoder, who shares an encounter she had during a very terrifying time when she was in high school. When I was about the year between 13 and 14, I had a few unexplained seizures, grand mal seizures, and they never completely figured out why I had them, what triggered them, or anything like that. Never had any since. I'm 28 now, so it's been about 15 years since I last had one. And the first one happened and I was with my family. And the second seizure, I was out with a group of friends. It was my freshman year of high school. And we were starting off the night by going to the football game, the high school football game, right around the corner from my house. And we got there early because we wanted to get good seats because we had friends on the team. And so we were in line waiting for um, the gates to open so we could go in. And as we were standing there, I started getting it's called an aura basically when you are about to have a seizure but it's basically all your vision starts to pixelate and get really sparkly almost is the best way i can think of to explain it you start feeling really lightheaded and it's often for people who experience seizures the warning sign that they're about to experience an episode so i could feel that happening but i was still so new to having these experiences that I didn't totally know what to chalk it up to, but I was like, something is off. And then when it started to kind of all click, I finally realized, "Uh oh, I better tell someone because my friends don't know what to do. So I need to tell somebody. And right at that point, I went down and everything went black for me. So I don't remember what happened at that point, but I was around probably 500 other people all waiting to get into the game. And when I came to, I immediately knew what had happened. I was laying on the ground in the grass, and there were people all around, but I couldn't see my friends immediately, and I wasn't totally sure what was going on. But I did notice that 
one of the coaches for the football team had come over by my side, was kneeling next to me, holding my hand. And when I woke up, he said, Christy, everything is okay. You're all right. You're safe. Your parents have been called. The paramedics are on their way. You're going to be okay. We're going to take care of you. You don't need to worry. And I just remember feeling, despite the fact that I was feeling embarrassment too, being a freshman in high school, surrounded by peers and friends, seeing this semi-embarrassing incident, um, I just felt very at peace. And I didn't know the coach personally, but knowing that there was someone who was a trained professional next to me looking after me um, was so comforting. And he said he'd been praying and believed that everything would be okay and that God saw me and I was not alone. And at that moment, I just felt totally at peace. It it started to dawn on me. I didn't know where my friends were. And I found that strange because I thought they would be right near me. Um, But within a few minutes, the paramedics showed up and the ambulance came. They loaded me up. And as they were closing the doors, the coach was right there and said, you're going to be okay. And just reminded me that God was watching and he saw me. And then he was the one who closed the door. And I got over to the hospital and sure enough, I was fine. Um, My parents were there. They met up with me. My friends came over as well. And later on, when I was not so woozy anymore, um, because typically after you have a seizure, you're pretty foggy in your brain for a while. Um, so I told my parents and my friends that just the thing that had meant so much to me was this coach who, like minutes before the game was about to start, had come over and taken the time to reassure me, make sure everything was okay, and help orchestrate everything that needed to happen. And my friends, especially because they were there, looked at each other and were very confused. And they said, Christy, there was no coach with you. There was nobody next to you except us. We were all sitting in a circle around you and trying to pray for you and be there to comfort you. And I hadn't known that they were sitting around me. I had no recollection of that. All I remembered was the coach being next to me. But with them sitting right next to me, they would have known if there had been a coach who came around. And they had zero memory of that. They didn't see anybody. Yeah, I can still picture his face today. He had blue eyes, he had bandy brown hair, he was wearing a green polo, and I just, I remember his voice, and I just remember feeling so calm with him. Like, all of those details are very vivid to me, and I don't know why, but I have almost a snapshot in my head of a little few second clip just playing over and over in my head of that moment, and I can still see his face. My heart has always felt that it must have been God sending an angel to just be there to comfort and reassure me and let me know that I wasn't alone. And it's always been a really special memory for me, and it's one that's hard to explain to people sometimes. Um, A lot of people have been like, oh, well, you were woozy, you maybe were imagining things, and I don't know exactly how to chalk it up except for that whatever it was, God didn't let me feel afraid that day. And... It was a pretty special moment for me. As you consider your wow God story, as you look back over your life, maybe like Christy, you'll have clarity about a moment. Perhaps you were afraid. Perhaps you'd been crying out to God. Perhaps you were at the end of your rope. As you look back at that story, you might reconsider some moments and go, I wonder, you know, because, and there's no, definitive that was an angel. Maybe it was an angel or maybe it was God's direction in that coach's life to go and offer comfort. I know. That's the thing about these angel things. It's like, was that a man or was that an angel? Nobody else saw him. That's the part that gets like, whoa. Okay. But I guess my question or my reaction to that is, does it matter if it was an angel? She was comforted. Yes. Like God comforted her, met her there in a very terrifying, uncertain time. And yeah. she knew she was going to be okay. Yeah, she knew she was going to be okay. God intervenes in our life all the time. And because I think it was so traumatic, she can look back and point to it and yeah. say, God was here. Thank you, God. Yes, 
Absolutely. And Christy, if you're listening right now, don't forget that. God was with you. God is with you. God will always be with you. In the traumatic moments and in the everyday mundane, he is with us. Wow, God. Listen to this next story from Tia, who shares an experience she had as a child in a pool. I was about four years old, so pretty young. We had recently moved into a new home. It was my mom, my dad, my older brother, myself, a younger brother, and my mom had just given birth to my twin brothers. So there were five kids under six years old. We had a pool, which was super exciting. Um, My mom was going to teach my brothers and me how to swim. And I recall being outside, and I remember being by myself. So I had looked at the pool, I saw a sock floating, and I was like, well, hey, I'm just going to go pick it up. I walked up onto the deck, I leaned over to pick it up, leaned too far, and ended up falling in. And at the time, I did not know how to swim, so I instantly am, you know, struggling to stay above water, and I'm flailing, and I'm hoping that somebody would see me, and I just keep thinking, someone please come save me. And then I suddenly just, I felt hands around my torso lift me up above the water so I could actually catch my breath and I was getting guided to the ladder. I was able to get out and when I was able to wipe my eyes and kind of open them up and see what was going on, in my mind I thought my dad had come and saved me but I was still by myself and there was nobody there. My first thought was my guardian angel just saved me. It was just mind-blowing everything was just so vivid and I can still feel like the strength and the love of the hands that were on me. I mean, I don't really know how to explain it other than that. It was just probably one of the most profound experiences in my life. I can't help but wonder if through our entire childhood, if we have maybe an angel or two or three on assignment every day. Right. Because childhood just seems so risky. <laughs> like I remember as a new mom thinking, okay, my job today is to keep JD and Jesse alive. And the times that, that we have no recollection of because they were just kind of inconsequential in our days, unless they hadn't been there. I read a book from a man once, um, who talked about a near-death experience. And he was angry with God saying, why didn't you protect me? And God opened his eyes and there was this angel that was holding the windshield in place. Like this angel was Mm. spreading their body to hold the windshield in place so it didn't collapse on him. And I've always thought since I heard that story, we can complain about, oh, it didn't go this way or it didn't go that way or he didn't save me or he didn't rescue me because we can't see. Right. We, we can't. That makes me think of that verse in Matthew about how the eyes, our eyes are a lamp into the body. And I think about May, who's young. She's six. It's Anne's daughter. But I remember the first time we experienced Christmas together. I remember her going up to the baby in the manger and her eyes were so wide. She was just taking in this view. And she just, at this point in her life, she walks around with this wide-eyed amazement about that or when we found her water wings after we prayed for them and how my eyes aren't as wide anymore. (laughs) It's like I'm thinking about the tasks of the day or the things I have to do. And it's like, oh God, give me those wide eyes to your mystery so that I can see those hands that are saving me or experience a coach that gives me comfort and then attribute it to you. Well, like, thank you, God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's really good. Well, Jesus made it pretty clear where to approach him as children. Absolutely. To be childlike and to have wide eyed wonder. Um, Now this next wow God story is not from the perspective of a child, although there was a child involved. This is from a mom who had a nightmarish experience with her child way, way high above her head, and she had no idea how to rescue him. 
Well, I have twin boys, and at the time, um, they were probably around seven years old. My one son has major medical problems and special needs. And this is actually a story about my other son, Andrew. And um, we were in Wisconsin at the time. Um, my, I grew up in Wisconsin, and my parents had um, purchased a place that was up near the ski hills of like Upper Michigan area and some in Wisconsin. And so we were up at what we called the ski shack as kids. We went up there skiing all the time. And so we took um, our kids up, and we were taking, um, I was taking Andrew skiing. He was just starting to learn how to ski and my son Daniel was home with my husband because he wasn't able to ski and so my dad had kind of um, taught me to teach my son Andrew with this ski harness and it went around his waist and you would um, kind of like a big long rope and then you would kind of hold on to it and have them ski in front of you and it was a way to kind of guide them so we had gone down the hill and he had done really well and we were getting onto the ski lift and you know you always see the signs at the ski lift to make sure anything that's like scarves and things are like tucked in so they don't get caught and I've been skiing my whole life so I knew that so I had the rope um it was still around his waist but I had the whole thing um bundled up on my lap so that when we got got off the ski lift I'd be able to help guide him again and um we get to the top of the ski lift and it happened so fast I don't even know how it happened but we were getting off and suddenly he was being drugged around um by the, by the chair and it, it didn't and there's supposed to be a ski hill operator at the top, there was not. And there's also supposed to be a bar that makes the ski lift stop if someone falls, and it didn't. So several things went wrong. And all of a sudden he was being pulled and he was going down the hill, you know, caught up in this um, web of this rope hanging from the chairlift. So I just panic, I'm screaming, I, I go down and he's literally above me hanging from the ski lift so it's still kind of around of his waist and i'm skiing as fast as i can it's it's just going because no one is stopping the lift people are trying to yell i think i'm yelling trying to get people to stop the lift at certain points of the ski i mean i'm flying down the hill and he's above me at least i don't even know 20 30 feet in the air at times and I, it was about halfway down the hill when all of a sudden the ski lift stopped. So they must have gotten word down to the, to the down to the ski lift operator at the bottom of the hill. And uh, this is just completely, I believe, a God thing that when the ski lift stopped, it was at the lowest point. Um, I still couldn't reach him. He was still above my head. So I'm standing there. I have my hand up in the air, you know, reaching as far as I can. And he's still probably a good, I don't know, 15 feet above my hands. Like I can't. I can't reach him and he was just hanging there and so sweet I was so focused on just trying to help him I don't even know if I said anything to him but he was just at later after hearing him tell the story he remembers just being at peace and um, not scared at all and so that but in the moment it was frightening the oh he did say one thing to me he did say mommy um, it's starting to hurt my neck and it would it had been around his waist and and then it was creeping up under his armpits and then kind of getting close to his neck so my mama brain is just like freaking out and I, I would love to say that in those moments I was praying but I wasn't I was just panicked and all of a sudden out of the this all happened so fast out of the blue these two boys came skiing down the hill on their snowboards and they popped off their boots. And I just remember they, they, it happened so fast, it was like a dream. And one boy got on the other boy's shoulders and they reached up. And I just remember saying, take off his skis because I thought if, the, if he fell, the skis could hurt him or us. And so they popped off his skis and then they needed to unbuckle this harness around his waist and they unbuckled the harness and he fell and I and I, to this day I don't quite remember I feel like I caught him and I was hugging him and all of a sudden I opened my eyes and they're gone I mean they I was gonna thank them I was gonna say thank you so much for helping and the minute I opened my eyes they were gone and I mean I couldn't see them anywhere um, I just could and I was just holding him and pretty soon um, a ski patrol came on his sled and you know just checked to see if we were okay put us on his you know sled brought us in and um, got us hot chocolate and things like that and I just remember thinking that 
that was so surreal. How would those two boys have even known what to do? It happened so fast. They didn't even have time to really consult each other to see what we should do. And and later I was talking, you know, Andrew was little, he was probably seven or eight. Um, and I just remember talking to him about it. And he, when he was young, he liked this little cartoon show called Napoleon. And there's a part where it's about a little gold retriever puppy who gets caught in a hot air, hot air balloon or something. And he's floating in the air and there's a song that's playing or he's singing to himself when he's up in the air. And Andrew's like, I just remember singing the Napoleon song. <laughs> and he was said that he felt peaceful and comforted and he wasn't scared at all. And um, and I remember thinking to myself, this was the summer, I was sitting out on my deck and I was looking up at a tree and thinking to myself, I wonder exactly where that chairlift was. Like, I wonder how tall that really was. And so I get out a measuring tape and I'm, I measured like up to where about I thought the bottom of the keys would have been. And then I kind of quickly did the math of like one boy being on top of another boy, like kind of figuring it out even if they were tall like let's say he was six foot like how much would this be and um i measured it and i just thought there, there's no way they could have reached him there's no possibility they could have reached him and it just kind of hit me like i'm pretty sure that was angels and in the moment i thought it was but i it wasn't until i kind of thought it through and i even talked to my son now who's 25 about it and um He's like, yeah, Mom, I think it was angels too. So I definitely believe that um, the Lord is in our lives and he He loves us so much and he, he'll even send angels to help us if, if need be. So yeah, it definitely strengthens my faith. We are curious if you have a wow God story that you're thinking of right now an undeniable moment with God. And we're wondering if you'd like to share that story with us, even if it's not on the podcast, even if it's not on the show, um, perhaps it would strengthen your faith to just share that story. So please come find us at wowgod.com. And while sharing that story will strengthen your faith, it'll also strengthen ours as well. Because when we share stories, that's what happens. One of the stories that's been unearthed in me was when I turned 50, a group of friends, we left the country because I kept joking I wanted to leave the country when I turned 50. <laughs> and so my friends put together a trip and we were going to miss the flight. My friend Sarah and I, um, there was ice on the wings in Denver. They had to de-ice. We were late getting into Dallas. We missed the flight to Miami and we weren't going to make it. And I was running around the airport and so discouraged trying to get a flight going here, going there, just worried and anxious and trying in my own strength. And I gave up and I said, God, I haven't even prayed. And um, I don't think we're going to make our flight. And I'm so discouraged. But God, if you can make a way. So I got in another line and this little petite redheaded woman, she was about five foot two, long, beautiful red hair, stood behind me. And she said, are you waiting, trying to get on this flight? And I'm like, yes. And she said, well, I think if you went down to gate B23, there's um, someone there that could help you. And I'm like, okay. So I go down, Sarah and I go down to B23 and we get on a flight, like within five minutes, they're like, yeah, there's two openings, only two on this flight. And I get on the flight and I'm like, who was that redheaded lady? And what stands out to me about your story, Lisa, is when you paused to remember to pray and then you were able to proceed with a sense of peace that God is in control. That wouldn't have happened if you hadn't prayed to surrender to all that worry or concern to him. Like, okay, Lord, what can you do? Yeah, it's these mysterious moments that you can't necessarily say. I mean, Mary was able to definitely say she heard from an angel. Joseph saw an angel in a dream. But as you reflect on your life, if a story is unearthed, a wow God story, don't be shy. Um, we will honor it and we would be honored to hear it. So wowgod.com. As we continue to walk this journey with you, let us keep our eyes open, wide open, so that we can see the moments that make us say, Wow, God. Wow, God. Wow, God. My wow, God story. I wanted to share a wow, God moment. That's my wow, God story. Praise God. And I'm so thankful to God for this wow, God moment. So, thank you, God. <laughs> You've been listening to Wow, God Stories, a Wow, God production. 
a ministry of the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Discover more at wowgod.com.